Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my final doll for this Halloween season. I was lucky enough to participate in a collab hosted by Diamonds of Crafts along with these very talented artists over on Instagram. Steffo Dolls, Lemon Kitten Creations, Nerdy Capybara, Beanie Babies, Sandrine, The Southpaw Dolly, Doll Party by Zoe, Bony Keyses by Nuno, Whizzing Oda, Crystal Dolls, Lacey's Creations, Noodle Toots, Boho Punks, Catmelian Studio, Electric Bunny VT, Stitch Witch Creations, Mooney Bayo. I'll be sharing their socials in the description box down below, so be sure to check out all of their amazing creations. Our collab thing was Haunted Circus, and we wanted to have dolls that represented lots of different aspects, so I chose to make a sad little popcorn usherette. For my base doll, I chose Frankie. The old G1 doll has such a sweet face sculpt, so she's the perfect choice to make a sweet, sad doll. This Frankie has obviously had a run-in with a budding stylist in her previous life, but I will take care of the rest of that hair with a quick pass of my electric shaver. Once the remaining hair has been removed, I dunk her head first into a cup of boiled water to make her head nice and squishy. This makes removing the head much easier and there's less of a chance that you'll damage the neck peg. Using a flathead screwdriver and needle nose pliers, I scrape out the remaining hair plugs and pull out the gooey mess through the neck hole. So much gluey mess inside such a small head. I removed all of her factory paint with 100% acetone. It was after I removed the paint that I finally noticed that little hole in her mouth. I figured that would be weird to try to paint around, so I'm going to fill it up with a bit of epoxy sculpt. Now that the head's been taken care of, I can prep the body. I use an X-Acto to slice off the neck bolts and I sand away all of the stitching on the body. I am wet sanding to cut down on the amount of particulate that's produced, but you should always wear a mask when sanding so you're not breathing that stuff in. I give the scalp a coat of paint that will match her hair color. This will make it less noticeable if any scalp shows after styling the hair. For the hair, I'm using this chunky yarn from Yarn Bee. This is the Twirltastic line, which has unfortunately been discontinued. It doesn't really need to be brushed out. I've just cut this into the desired length and I pull away a small plug size piece. I slide it onto my rerouting tool and plunge it into the head. When I've finished the reroute, I can secure the plugs with some liquid fusion glue. Now for the outfit, and oh man, was this a headache. I have cut out all of my pattern pieces except for the four side pieces. I cut out four rectangles big enough to fit the pattern piece on, and we'll be sewing these in place, then tracing and cutting out the shape. Due to the angle, there was warping in the outfit, so this worked best to maintain the correct shape. Before I begin assembling, I fray check all my cotton fabrics and heat seal the edges on the synthetics. A good way to know the difference is, if it burns, it's a natural fiber, so fray check. If it melts, it's synthetic, so heat seal. I take the top bodice portion and I sew up the darts. I can now attach the gold underbust portion to the top bodice. I line up my center points and I first sew one side starting on the outside edge and sewing towards the middle point, and then I do the other side. Now I will attach the front and back sides to the center striped fabric pieces. I line them up with the right sides facing and I sew down that straight seam. I made this bodysuit several times and it just kept coming out wonky and I finally realized these panels were the culprit. I have digitized this pattern and made it available to my Patreon supporters Cherry Bombing Up. I think I have around 30 patterns there now. This is one of my more advanced patterns, so these step-by-step -step video portions are really handy to use. Once the seam has been stitched in place, I flatten the seam allowance and then I draw the pattern shape minus the seam allowance onto that rectangle and then cut away the unneeded part. I 
can now sew the two pieces together along that middle seam, but I stop at my marked spot so it'll still fit over her booty. I then attach the bodice portion. Before I can close up the side seams, I need to hem the leg holes. Since this is curved, I place little snips all the way around so that once hemmed, it'll have a smooth edge. I want to avoid visible stitches here, so I'm going to use fabric fusion glue to hem. I fold the piece in half at the crotch and bring right side spacing to sew up the side seams. I did hem the top at this point, but I'm so great at this YouTube stuff that I totally forgot to press record. I am making the straps from gold seed beads and filigree bead caps. I sew a bit of gold thread to the point of the bodice and I add beads until I hit the shoulder area and then add the cap. Then I finish it off with more beads until it reaches the correct length and I sew it to the back. I finished off with a velcro closure and a few embellishments to the front. The hat was pretty easy to make with a bit of math. I cut a circle from paperboard and I need a rectangle that would fit all the way around. To find the circumference, I multiply pi by the diameter, so 3.14 times 28 millimeters, so my rectangle needs to be about 88 millimeters. I butt the ends of the rectangle together and secure them with a bit of tape, and then I apply a thin layer of contact cement to the outside. Once it's tacky, I layer my fabric on top and trim off the excess, leaving just enough to still fold it in on both sides for a clean edge. I use fabric glue to secure the fabric to the inside of the hat. I wanted to thank all of my friends over on Patreon because they helped make these videos possible. Angel Book Walter, B. Burnett, Deborah Sweeney, Galena, Jazur, Mary Helen Burns, Stephanie L., Hanu Made This, Josephine, Dalicious, Amber S., Awkward Burb, Bex Mini Studio, Camille, Dancing Johari, Echo 1911, Kitsy, K. Whippell, and The Oak Magpie. I am really sorry about all this noise. I swear I think everyone in the neighborhood is doing their yard work right now. The one time I can actually sit down to record voiceover. I'm just hoping I can edit most of this out. <laughs> I follow these same steps for the top of the hat, and when both pieces are done, I can glue the top to the ring. I embellish the hat with some gold trim, and I wind up adding a popcorn logo later off camera. Here is the finished outfit, and I absolutely love it. I decided to omit showing the skirt this time, since it was just three layers of ruffle attached to some trim. Now for the accessories. I downloaded this template online that shows how to fold a popcorn bag and I brought that into Photoshop. I designed a bag that fit her color scheme and I left in the required tabs and the light colored fold lines. While I was at it, I designed a popcorn logo to use on her tray and to put on her hat. I printed the boxes out on matte photo paper and I cut out the design. Once I have this cut, I carefully make creases along the dashed lines. I apply contact cement to the side tabs and the bottom of the box. When I'm through, I seal the layers with a few layers of matte varnish. These boxes need popcorn, so I get started making some. I take epoxy sculpt and create little popcorn shape pieces. I create lots of different shapes for variety. I spent several hours making what I thought was enough and then come back to make even more. With my popcorn cured, I can fill my bags. I'm not totally crazy, so I 3D printed forms to use inside the bag so that they don't have to be filled completely with popcorn, and this also makes them sturdier. I add a bit of hot glue to the bottom of the bag, insert the form, then add more hot glue on top, and before it can harden, I sprinkle on my pieces of popcorn. I give the popcorn a quick coat of paint and do a bit of shading to make it look more like delicious buttery popcorn. I think they turned out super cute and I really surprised myself on this one. I got the tray 3D printed and I sketched out a starburst pattern. I painted it on in colors that correspond with her outfit and sealed it with a layer of spray varnish. For the popcorn logo, I printed this out on water slide decal paper and I cut it as close to the edge as I could. I dropped it into some water and let it lift from the paper backing. 
I wet my fingers before handling it so that it doesn't stick to my fingers and slide the back off and place it onto the tray. The cream is pretty sheer, so I made sure to paint that area of the tray to help with opacity. I once again seal this in with some varnish, and then I use ribbons and jewelry findings to create a strap for the tray and glue it in place. I add golden nail art studs to look like hardware. The tray is perfect and I even reserved a few pieces of popcorn to add to the bottom so it looks like some spilt out. For her shoes, I decided to use my 3D printed G1 Skull Heels. These were the very first shoes I've ever made and I still use them pretty regularly in my customs, even now three years later. I painted them dark red with black heels and I brushed gold onto the skull. Face-up time! These are the supplies that I've used and a full list is available in the description box below if you're interested. Before we jump into the face-up, I wanted to quickly ask if you would be interested in a video where I just talk about the products that I use. No doll, just sharing some info. This question has come up a bunch on my different social media, so I wanted to put some feelers out there. Alright, so back to the doll. I have her prepped with three layers of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat and I jump in with defining her eye shape. My first sketch was a little bit too cat-eyed and I wasn't getting the innocence and sadness I wanted from her, so I did a bit of tweaking and I rounded out the top. I probably wouldn't have picked Haunted Circus as a doll theme on my own, but that also made me think a bit more about what I wanted to do. These collabs are always great about pushing me out of my comfort zone and creating something I might not have come up with without the prompt. I mean, when you hear the word circus, your first thoughts generally turn to main acts like aerialists, clowns, or other main characters. You don't often think about the roustabouts or other workers who actually make the magic happen behind the scenes. This is how I landed on a popcorn usherette. But the spooky aspect had me stumped a bit. Popcorn doesn't exactly say spooky, so what to do? I briefly considered doing something where it depicts how she died, like choking on popcorn or something like that, but it just didn't feel quite right for me. That's when I remembered this book where the circus acts were ghosts and they would lure people to the circus. At the stroke of midnight, they could kill one person and return themselves to life after collecting a certain number of souls for the circus. That's where my haunted aspect came into play. My usherette would be a sad, lonely ghost stuck in her fate to forever haunt the circus because she can't bring herself to collect the souls needed to escape her melancholy existence. I wanted her to have tear marks down her face like running mascara. I first attempted to use watered down watercolor paint and make it flow like tears would, and this just proved to be disastrous and I was worried I had just ruined this face up. The paint just didn't cooperate and honestly I was expecting too much from it anyway. I wound up wiping this off with a wet cotton bud so that I could start over. Honestly, this is what is so great about using water activated paint like watercolor and gouache because when you mess up, you can usually still save it. I give it another go, this time very carefully painting on the track marks with much better success. This face up went through a really ugly period too. Something about the eyes just had me worried. I had to trust the process, worst case scenario, I wipe it off and start over. Towards the end, I decided to add a golden ring of the gilding paint right around the pupil of the eye. I like the eerie quality it adds to the face and the way the light catches it. It did give me a bit of trouble later when taking pictures though. I add the final touches of mica powder for that shimmery glow and catch lights and highlights to the waterline. I really wound up being worried about this face up for nothing because she turned out so adorable and sad. Now I just need to style the hair and she'll be complete. I separate the hair out into four different sections. I take the pieces at her temples and twist them into a half up style. I use pins and hair clips to hold sections when needed.
With the top portion secured, I gather the back and tail end from the top and tie off once again. I slide a rod with a loop in the top into the center of the gathered hair, then bring the tail into the loop and pull it through. I loop it through one more time, then I neaten the ends. Now she's finally done. You'll remember here is where we started. And here's where we ended up. I decided to name her Mallory the Unfortunate Usherette. The name Mallory means unlucky, so I thought it was a fitting name. Let me know what you think about this sad popcorn girl, and if you were making a character for a haunted circus, what would it be? Mallory is available for purchase, so if you're interested, please check out the link in the description box for my Etsy shop. This was part of a collab, so be sure to head over and check out the other videos and post. You will find the links to everyone's social in the description box. A huge thank you goes out to Damonza Crass for hosting. It's been a wonderful working with you again. I wanted to thank you all so much for watching this video and staying to the end. And remember, always be creating!